At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. You lose! Good day! Hi, welcome to Chem Mistakes. Here we go through actual student responses to chemistry questions and look at what's good about them, what's not good about them, and how to improve them in a way that hopefully helps your understanding. Here we have a question to explain the following ionization energy comparisons. We have arsenic, which is a 4P3 uh, electron configuration at the end, and selenium, which is 4P4. And of course, we have all the way up 3, 10, 4S2, and all of the 1, 2, and 3 energy levels filled. So our final electrons, though, are in the 4p and 4p states for these, and it seems as though as we move from arsenic to selenium, we see a very tiny decrease in ionization energy, which is interesting because normally the ionization energy increases as we move from left to right. So student answer one, selenium is the higher ionization energy, okay, so that is not true, selenium is lower, because the ionization energy increases as you move across a period. So this is restating what the trend is, but it's missing that we have an exception here. This is not the case for these particulars. Arsenic is over here on the periodic table and selenium is here, and yet selenium has a lower ionization energy even though we're moving from left to right across the periodic table. Okay? Student 2 says, arsenic is more stable in selenium because it has a half-filled orbital, so it is easier to remove an electron from there. Okay, so it's always good when you're doing answers like this that the more specific you can be, the better. So let's actually draw this out. So if we're looking at arsenic and selenium, so arsenic is going to be in the 4P3, so let's actually put together an orbital diagram here. So there's arsenic, and for selenium, we have 4p4, so we're going to put our three electrons in, same spin, and then our fourth one goes like that. So this one is saying arsenic is more stable than selenium because it has half-filled orbital. So really this should be orbitals, uh, and we should probably specify that they are the 4p orbitals. So it's easier to move an electron from there. So this is probably not a great choice of word because we we're just talking about arsenic here in the half-filled. And selenium before that. So from there, it doesn't really clarify. So the one that's easier to remove from is the selenium. So what we're finding is, is that the amount of energy needed to remove the selenium electron is slightly less than that from the arsenic, although very, very slightly less. Okay, the curiosity is this has one additional proton, and we're adding to the same energy level, so we shouldn't see an increase in shielding. So something's going on that's causing this to be an exception. Now, there are two good ways to answer this, but one is you should definitely start by including the orbital diagram picture of just the, the final valence electrons, if nothing else, to give an idea of something to kind of point to and say, this is what I'm talking about here, okay? But if you are taking an AP or maybe even an IB chemistry test, the way that they will want this explained, they will not want you to say it's because half-filled orbitals are more stable than filled orbitals or filled orbitals, are, are more stable, or a set of half-filled orbitals is more stable. They don't want you to just say stable, because that really doesn't imply you know what you're talking about. It doesn't really communicate your understanding. Now, it turns out there are multiple reasons why this is slightly less than this. Now, the AP version of that, that they want you to state, is that these two electrons, so our pair of electrons in the 4P orbital, Because these two are in the same orbital description, that means they're going to be close together. And when two electrons are close, there's a repulsion between them. And so what we see is that there's a large electron-electron repulsion between them. Now, what that means is then we can think of this as being, all right, well, it's already getting pushed quite a bit by this electron. So that means I don't have to pull it as much to take it away. Even though I've added another proton, there's so much repulsion from this that I'm able to come in and remove it. Now, if you've really sat down and thought about how this mechanic should shake out, you should probably be a little suspicious of that. And it turns out that that is correct. There actually is more going on to this, and there's some weird quantum stuff that you're not gonna get into on the AP chem level. 
dealing with exchange energy and a whole host of other features. But if you're taking an AP chem test or an IB chem test, this is the way you want to explain this. You'll want to diagram it. You'll want to identify which electrons you're talking about here in selenium. And then you want to say that, that in arsenic, you don't have that extra repulsion. And so therefore, even though there's one fewer proton, this is an exception, and therefore it's more challenging to remove. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but... Uh...